Hey everyone, James Wilson here, uh, coming at you from my garage gym. So I had to change it up a little bit this time. I wanted to talk to you about uh, ramping isometrics and the top benefits for us as mountain bikers using it. Now, ramping isometrics is a unique training uh, protocol, method, whatever you want to call it, that I was introduced to by Steve Maxwell uh, about a year ago. And it was at a seminar of his I went to and he showed me the, or not me, everybody there went over the ramping isometrics. And I was really impressed by what I saw. I decided to give them a good go. Uh, went away, committed to doing uh, at least one, usually two workouts of this method each week. And I've been doing it consistently for almost a year now. And I'm really just blown away by the, the results that I've seen. It really is one of those things that I'm mad that I didn't know about this technique sooner because it's one of the, the the most effective ways that I've found to safely and quickly build strength and high tension cardio and, and some things that I'll touch on that are really beneficial for us uh, on the trail. So real quick, what are ramping isometrics? Now, like I said, they're a, a specific way of using isometric training. And isometrics are uh, means no movement. So you're getting in a position and you're uh, pushing or you know trying to resist uh, something and not allowing any movement. So I'll show you real quick uh, a demonstration. Uh, this is a jujitsu belt. Uh, you can do this technique with a rope. Um, you can use it with a forearm forklift, even a large beach towel. Uh, I recommend the jujitsu belt because it's uh, soft on the hands, but it's not going to rip. And they're, they're cheap. You can get them on Amazon for like 12 bucks. But uh, anyways, I'm going to demonstrate this with this. So one of the, the best ones is to start out with is the chest press. Real easy for people to, to get their mind around it. And so you're going to get set in this chest press position. I'm looking for like the weakest range of motion, got good, strong posture, you know, nice, tall, good, uh, good breathing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have three 30 second blocks, right? That are going to one take place right after the other. So the first one I'm doing, I, I start and I start pushing 50% of my effort into the, into the belt here, into the chest press. And while I'm doing this, I have to maintain perfect, you know, posture, really good tension, and good breathing, that's the important thing. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Let the breathing fuel that tension. Now after 30 seconds, your buzzer goes off and you ramp up, you immediately ramp the tension up to 80%. So you don't relax and then go into it, you just ramp right up to it. So you keep that tension constant. Right here, it's starting to get a little uncomfortable, but again, use that breathing. You know, trying to stay relaxed with your face, good posture. And then finally, the last 30 seconds, I'm sure you can guess where this is going, you're going to ramp up to 100%. You're going to give everything you've got left into it. You're looking for one set of these to failure, so you want to be done by the end of it, right? So that's the point of the, uh, the exercise is one set to failure, generate maximum tension within the movement pattern, and then move on to the next movement pattern. Now, uh, there's a couple, there's a lot of benefits to this training method. Um, three of them specifically as it applies to us as mountain bikers. One, this is the safest way that I've found to build strength. The, because you're not moving, you're not placing stress on the joints, you're not putting yourself in danger of, uh, of, of you know, uh, strains and, and uh, you know, hurting joints like you are. So, for example, with that exercise there, the chest press, if I was to do push-ups to failure, if I was to uh, do a max bench press, and, and try and take that close to failure. I'm exposing myself to a lot of injury risk. I'm exposing myself to a lot of uh, potential damage to my joints with that movement-based, uh, um, those movement-based exercises. So the, one of the, the things that really clicked for me was one of the main components of strength is the ability to build tension in the muscle. And so the better you can build that tension in the muscle, the stronger you're gonna be able to, to, to be, especially if you're using that muscle within a movement pattern. So the, the idea of building tension and then using other exercises or getting on our bike and riding to turn that tension into sport-specific strength, that was one of those big breakthroughs for me. Like teaching the, the body how to create tension within a movement pattern is kind of this missing element that we're, we don't have before we start trying to apply that to specific movements. And so, the, uh, um, again, it's, it's a really safe way to build strength, really easy on the joints. The other uh, benefit is you, you can see breathing is a huge aspect of doing ramping isometrics properly. And uh, breathing is the cornerstone of cardio. Like if you're not breathing properly, 
then all your other cardio training is, is pointless. Like I've talked about this before, like just jumping on a bike and doing intervals and just your posture and your breathing going to crap, just so you can lay down a certain amount of watts. Like that's not really training. Like you're, you're teaching your body bad habits. Uh, your, your breathing should be the cornerstone of your cardio. And so even though you're not moving right there, your body's under an extreme amount of tension and your body's having to fuel that tension for a very long period of time, right? You're under tension for 90 seconds total, 60 seconds of which is very high tension. And so your metabolism is having to fuel this tension. Your breathing is having to stay calm. You're training yourself that when you get into these high tension situations for your posture and your breathing to remain the same. And it's one of the big things that I see with riders is they get into these high tension situations. They got to stand up on a climb or, uh, you know, stand up for a sprint or, um, you know, just something that really requires them to get into a really high tension uh, effort and their posture and their breathing just goes to crap. And so now they're just burning energy even faster. So not only are they in this like, you know, high energy, high tension situation, they're very inefficient with how they're breathing and how they're moving, where their posture is. And so with ramping isometrics, you're training this high tension cardio in a way that you really can't do it with any other training method because when you're doing intervals or you're doing you know some other sort of cardio training the muscles have a chance to to relax there's a there's moments where the tension uh is less and they can recover a little bit with ramping isometrics man once you start the tension the tension's on for 90 seconds total so it's a totally it's completely different uh a challenge for your cardio system to fuel that type of tension. And again, it's very specific to what we use on the trail. It's such a great way for you to train that, what I call like the highest level of high tension cardio, which is just that constant tension with no break for an extended period of time. So um, extremely effective for, for training that there. And also, I mean, they are the most efficient and convenient workouts that you're gonna do. You can get a complete workout done with ramping isometrics in 20 minutes or less. I know that sounds like an infomercial, but it's true because you're only doing one set of each exercise. So you're not having to go through it multiple times. You're doing one exercise, picking, you know, I like to pick a push, pull, a hinge, a squat, um, usually some sort of neck exercise, some sort of uh, you know auxiliary exercise for the core. So you're talking like five, six exercises. They're a minute and a half each, right? And and so again, like you do the math, and it's like, wow, it does not take long to get through one of these workouts. But again, it's super effective. You're building strength. You're building cardio. You're developing good posture, good breathing habits. There's so much good stuff that's happening from these workouts. But again, like I mentioned, you know, you can get a, a, a jujitsu belt, right? Like less than 15 bucks on Amazon. And once you have it, this thing will travel with you everywhere. You got it at home. There's never any excuse to not do one of these workouts, which again is what, what makes it so great because it's so convenient that you can be consistent with it. And you know, if you are traveling, then there's no reason to have to skip workouts or modify things. It's like, man, just throw your belt in the thing. And if you forget your belt, you grab a big old towel that they have. You can grab a rope, uh, you know, again, the forearm forklift is a, is a good option as well. Um, so you, you have the tools that you need at your disposal right now. Uh, you can invest in something very uh, cheaply and you'll have it forever and you can do them anywhere, anytime, less than 20 minutes, just two workouts a week. Again, I know it sounds like a freaking infomercial, but the, the thing that doesn't make this more popular, I'll tell you this right now, this is why, this is where the infomercial stuff stops which is this stuff ain't easy right like don't don't get me wrong like this stuff is super effective but it's hard like when you are grinding through you know your fourth exercise and you know and you're by yourself in the garage because you can't talk anyone else into doing this with you after a couple of workouts you know it is it's tough it's not sexy it, and that's why it doesn't sell like a lot of the uh you know p90x and brazilian booty uh, programs do, but um, it's effective. It's super effective. It's probably the most effective strength training method that I've come across, um, man, really in a long, long time. And I've been in this game for a while. Thought I'd seen it all. So again, Steve Maxwell, uh, uh, he's got a lot of good stuff out there as well. You can learn some more stuff about it. But I've actually, because I've been using it for the last year, I've learned a lot of great lessons about how this applies to mountain bikers and how you guys can use it to get uh, uh, good benefits from it. So. I just put together a new 12-week program based on it. There's a link here uh, in this video that you can learn more about it and uh, um, you know uh, pick up a copy. It's 15 bucks, so uh, you know not a very big investment there either. Uh, and again, so no more excuses. You can do strength training. 
um, ramping isometrics is the key to it. So if you have any questions or whatever, uh, you know, throw them in the comments. I'll come back later and check them out and answer them, or you can hit me up at james at bikejames.com. But uh, again, hopefully, I piqued your interest at least a little bit in this training technique. I, I I'm baffled why more people don't know about it. Um, I talked to you know a lot of coaches in the last year, and it seems to be this big underground mystery. But um, man, from the results I've seen, the people that I've turned on to who've been using it, the clients that I've been working with across the board, it's been like wow, game changing type results. And uh, also, it's been my most injury-free year of training. Like, I've, I've not hurt myself once training, which we all know, as much as we try not to, it's a reality when you're pushing it and you're trying to get stronger and fitter using traditional methods where you're, you know, lifting a lot of weights and doing a lot of reps. So, um, you know, that, that injury-free year, yeah, it accounts for something. So it keeps your skill levels up if you're not having to take time off. So anyways, uh, I'm going to wrap it up now. Again, you got any questions or anything, hit me up, let me know. But uh, I will talk to you guys next time.